same value in Chinese. And normally it's the Molina drives for a long time and it's okay in the Philippines. It is also a city of uh, ALIS is a fry school, real fry. And uh, he today he is going to introduce uh, the good web VR with Abraham. Abraham is a framework for VR environment in browser and it's developed by Molina. I will uh, use Chinese to introduce Robert again. And Rob, Robert is the Molina Rips member, and he is located in the Philippines. He is a CTO, a training school CTO, LIHC. He is a little bit of a friend. He is going to introduce Build the Web VR with Abram. Abram is Molina's Framework 就是让你可以很容易在浏览器里面建构一个 V V R 环境。然后因为是 Molina 的专案，然后他同时其实也是 Molina Tech Speak。接接下来两场，就是这一场和下一场的两位讲者都是 Molina Tech Speak Tech Speak 的成员。啊，那我接下来就把时间交给那个 Robert。Thank you, Peter. Hi, good afternoon, Ni Hao. So just a background, okay, so my, my name is Bob Rea, so my real name is Robert, I'm from Manila, Philippines. Uh, my wife's family is originally from here in Taiwan, so I, on, I understand quite a few Chinese, can't speak that fast, but yeah, that's it. So both my, both my kids, they go to a Chinese school in Manila. So this is what I do. So I belong to the Tech Speakers Group of Mozilla, been representing Mozilla in the Philippines since 2011. Uh, I handle the IT department of a school, so it's a flying school in Manila. We are the first college, some sort of a university in the Philippines to offer aviation courses. I do my own uh, IT consulting. I have a firm. I also write for a newspaper. It's the oldest newspaper in the Philippines called Manila Bulletin. So I do tech stuff. When I am free during weekends like this, uh, we, uh, if I'm in Manila, I do football stuff for fans of football. Okay, I know Taiwan is a football nation. Okay, <laughs> this is my Twitter, and I have two kids. Their names are Zion and Haswell, and by the name of them, so you will know that their father is someone techie. Been using Firefox since version one. Anyone here been using Firefox since version one? I'm that old. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, being someone from the Philippines, so they will always ask me and mistook me as a Mozilla employee. No, I am not. Except that, yeah, I will, if my, my, my son will always tell his playmates, my dad is someone whose name is in the Firefox Monument. So this is how we treat our volunteers. If you have contributed to Mozilla, to Firefox, before the monument was erected, so your name should be there. So just a background. I know that you know what Firefox is. In the Philippines, when we ask, do you know what Mozilla is? Most of the time, they will tell me, Mozilla is Firefox. But Mozilla, as an organization, is more than what Firefox is. Why? We started with this. For those who are too young to know, maybe you had read about Netscape, okay? Just this morning, I was watching uh, HBO here, and just in time, okay? Uh, it was Godzilla was being played in HBO this morning, okay? So that's primarily where we started a couple of years ago. So that was in uh, 1998. So Netscape had this project to open source uh, the code, and it was called the Mozilla Project, okay? Now, being a nonprofit organization, not many people know that we are a nonprofit. Some people will even think that we are as big as Google, maybe as big as Microsoft, but the name may be as big, but the organization is not. So we live by our manifesto. We have a mission, and what is our mission? Our mission is to ensure that the internet will remain as a global public resource that is open and accessible to all. Whenever there are issues about openness, about accessibility, Mozilla is always there anywhere in part, any part of the world. So we also aspire to have an internet that truly puts people first, where individuals can shape their own experience and are empowered, safe and independent. 
now, so much about our mission. Just a quick note, so we have a new brand identity. If you have done this, so we change from this word mark to this, okay? So people have been asking me, what will happen if I will enter that in the awesome bar of our box? Have you tried entering this? Later, after my talk, try it. Enter those uh, characters in the awesome board of Firefox. Something awesome, not destructive, but happen. Okay? So we changed our logo from this to this. We have a new browser, it's called Firefox Quantum. It's one of the fastest out there, even faster than what uh, the former Firefox engine was. Even faster than the other browser. Okay, now going back to my talk. Okay, so I'm here to talk about a frame. Okay, so after my talk, someone, my colleague Ramimba, will be talking about mixed reality just to give you a background. Okay, so virtual reality seems to be complicated. Why? People thought for them to create virtual reality stuff, they need to learn new things. Correct and not correct. Okay. For example, how many of you here in this room are web developers? Cool. How many of you in this room are VR developers? Okay. Now, we thought of this. The problem is not technology. The problem is having to have people create content for web uh, for virtual reality without them uh, learning pretty much many new stuff, okay? So, we thought of giving people, web developers like you, a few JavaScript libraries, okay, tools. We will tap on the power of WebGL, which is open source, to make nice VR scenes, okay, that can be viewed and shared on any device, and if you don't have a VR device, even on the desktop, it will work. Or even your smartphone, okay? So we embark on this. So let's build on the web. Now, our mission is to keep the internet open, as I mentioned. So virtual reality is the set is set to change the future of web interaction. A few years back, if you will be if you're following CES, okay, the show electronic show, many of those headsets. Okay, gears for VR came into play. Okay, now it's pretty much affordable. Okay, the ability for anyone to access and enjoy virtual reality experiences is critical. Most of the schools, even in the Philippines, have started adopting virtual reality as an aid to learning. This is why we at Mozilla set out to bring virtual reality to web browsers like Firefox, and why we are enabling. Web VR in this end browser. Now, what is Web VR? Who among you here is the first time to have heard about Web VR today? Okay, who? So, what we aspire is for Web VR to bring virtual reality tools, standards, and experiences to the open web. So. WebVR is actually a set of experimental web uh, JavaScript APIs that provides access to virtual reality devices like, if you know Oculus Rift, HTC Vive, okay, Samsung Gear VR, which I heard they will be stopping to produce, and even the cheap, I mean cheap in price, okay, Google Cardboard, okay. Currently available on Firefox or Chromium and of course Samsung Internet Browser for the VR. Okay. So WebVR has been instrumental in democratizing virtual reality in what sense? In a sense that more people can experience 3D content without expensive headsets. For a country like the Philippines, we are a third world country. Okay. We are trying to develop technology and we want technology to be enjoyed by more people. Having more devices for them to enjoy VR is quite challenging, okay? But, mind you, almost every Filipino has a smartphone, okay? That is something unique, okay? People in our country might not have laptops or desktop computers, but even kids, they have smartphones. 
Now, what if we can tap these devices for us to bring virtual reality experiences to them? Okay? We know that smartphones are not comparable to desktop or laptop computers. They are not that powerful yet. But giving proper guidance, proper tools, developers will be able to produce VR experiences for these devices. So web VR is quite huge. Okay? It's a huge time saver for content creators who needs to test and verify their work renders well on viewing platforms. Why? Later, when, we, when I talk about A-frame, you will notice it's just HTML. Okay? If you know how to code, if you know how to create websites, you already have a class. Okay? So having a stable API to work with means uh, to work with means 3D content can find a wider audience. Now, let me introduce you to A-frame. So what is A-frame? A-frame is an open source web VR framework for creating virtual reality or VR experiences with HTML. Kids as early as six years old, seven years old, know what HTML is. Okay? Now, if I will be asking you how hard it will be for you to create VR if you do not know HTML. It's quite hard. Okay? Now, what if you know HTML and we give you the proper tools to, co to create VR content, it will be faster, it will be easier for you to adopt this uh, technology. Now, with A-Frame, you, you can build VR scenes that work across smartphones, desktop, headsets like Oculus Go or Oculus Rift, and room scale HTC Vive. A-Frame is powerful and it is open source. Later I'll show you, okay? And it is easy to learn. How easy? Of course, it's just HTML. What is A-Frame not about, okay? A-Frame is not just a 3D scene graph or markup language, okay? The core is a powerful entity uh, component framework that provides a declarative, extensible, and composable structure to 3.js. If you have heard or, or have the experience 3.js. Now, what are the features of uh, A-Frame? A-Frame is VR made simple. How simple? With just using the script tag, you should uh, and the ASIN, okay? You should be able to insert and use A-Frame. It's declarative HTML. HTML is simple, easy to learn, easy to adopt, easy to deploy. Okay? Anywhere, if there's a browser, HTML will be understood. Okay? A-frame is accessible to everyone, like web developers, VR enthusiasts, artists, designers, educators, makers, especially kids. A-frame is entity component architecture. HTML is just the tip of the iceberg. Why? Developers have unlimited access to JavaScript, DOM APIs, 3.js, WebVR, and WebGL. Okay? So my, my, my colleague Romimba will be discussing about WebRx later after my talk. A-Frame is cross-platform. Since it works on the web, you only need a device that runs on a browser, uh, that runs a browser. Okay? Building web, uh, build, uh, building virtual reality applications will have support for all respective controllers. Okay, you don't need to have a headset or a controller. Your smartphone will do the trick. A-Frame still works on cellular desktop and even on smartphones. Performance, since it can run on a smartphone, which we know was smartphones are not that powerful, then you should be uh, assured of its performance, okay? 3G, uh, 3D objects update, uh, updates are all done in memory with little garbage and overhead. What else? If you will be using A-Frame, you will have access to a tool called Visual Inspector. So if A-Frame provides a handy built-in visual 3D inspector, 
and how do you initiate it? Just uh, click on, uh, press on Control Alt plus I if you're in a Windows machine. It should give you something like that. Okay. Components. So, what are the core components that you will have if you will be using uh, a frame? So, you will have components such as geometries, materials, lights, animation, models, raycaster, shadows, etc. Okay? Many. Okay? Since it is open source, people are allowed to contribute and make better components or many more components. It's proven and scalable. I don't need to elaborate, okay? So this is open source. We have proven many times in the past that this will work. Testament to it is that companies like Google, Microsoft, Oculus, and Samsung had made contributions to A-Frame. Now, who uses A-Frame? Companies like Google, that's the Disney, Samsung, Toyota, later on my example, have Toyota, and even NASA uses A-Frame for their websites, okay? Now, on to a short demo of code. If you have HTML page, all you need to do is to insert the script for A-Frame. This is the first part. And the second part is an A-Scene. What will be included in your A-Scene? Different markups. Say, I want to have a box, a cylinder, a spear, and a sky. If you will be creating a VR scene, you need to have something on a plane. Okay? So, how it will look like? Having a short code as this will result to something like this. Now, how does it work? I'll be switching. switching to my browser this one okay so this is how it looks like using that simple code and this is already a VR plane something that you can play upon build upon with a simple code as that if you want to change colors, say you change the color of the box, the box is a black color, let's say change it to red. Oh, later. Not anything. Later. So, this is another example. So, NASA uh, and Google created this website for the Mars rover. This is uh, the website being used by Toyota in Australia. So if I'm going to right click here, it's virtually not flash, it's not even movie. So this is the code, sorry. So in the inspector, I'll find for A frame. So it's there. Everything that you need to know about A-Frame plus the sample source codes are available at this website, aframe.io. You can play around with sample codes create from your own. Okay? You can even share it okay, to your friends or just yeah, simply go to the website and copy and paste the code. That's how simple it is. It works well with other frameworks like AngularJS, D3JS, React. View, Redux, and yeah, jQuery. Okay, so here are the samples that I had earlier. 
So this is the one from uh, NASA, created by Google. This is the one created by Fiona. We even have this example uh, using A-frame uh, with the use of controllers. So you will see that that girl on the right, uh, on the bottom of the screen, is actually using controllers. So the code reacts and that character follows. So it's one of the experiments, okay? Later after my talk, uh, my, my colleague will be talking about WebXR. So it's more of an API that allows web developers to create mixed reality XR, okay, experiences. So I'll skip on this. We even have our own browser for virtual reality. It's called Firefox Reality. If you are using uh, a headset, okay, uh, Oculus, any brand, uh, any any model, you should be able to download and use Firefox Reality in it. So it's like having your favorite. If if you're a fan of Firefox, you should be able to use Firefox within your headset. So this is how it looks like on Oculus Go. Okay. What else? If you are developing avatars, okay, for custom 3D environments for VR, you can also make use of Spoke by Mozilla. So it's creating a custom 3D environments using open source technologies, open web technologies. So with Spoke, you should be able to create 3D social scenes for hubs. So hubs by Mozilla or hubs.mozilla.com is an immersive communications on any device. So it's like having a virtual chat room using VR, web VR, okay? If you are a beginner, you can actually learn Spoke within five minutes. Provided that you know HTML. So that is the minimum requirement. If you know HTML, you should be able to learn how to use Spoke in five minutes. If you are the advanced type of coder or developer, you should be able to learn the advanced feature of Spoke in 10 minutes. What else? We also have, oh, sorry, okay. So for those who are taking photos, I'll be uploading my slide. I'll, I'll tweet the link on my Twitter, it's at Bob Reyes, and I'll be sharing it to the organizers of Costco. Okay. We also have uh, Unity Web VR assets available for free download okay, at the Unity uh, Asset Store. So if you are using Unity to develop stuff, so we have the Web VR assets readily available there for you to download. It allows creators to publish and share VR experiences created in Unity on the open web. Okay. So for those who are asking, uh, will web VR be working on different browsers? I will just leave this slide there. Okay. For as long as you are not using Inter Explorer, it should work. Okay. <laughs> Work, should work. Now, so this is our mantra. Please do not hurt the web. Use open standards or open web standards. Now, if you have questions, this is the right time to ask them. Just in English, uh, my, my, my Chinese is limited. <laughs> Do you have a kind of a stereotype that the, the VR experiences are pretty heavy and pretty GPU demanded? And when it comes to browser, our our stereotype is also that it's very resource heavy, like four gig of RAM, eight gig of RAM, and if you were to talk very uh, subjectively, how would you rank the desktop native app VR experiences compared to browser-based VR experiences? Okay, the, the, the answer there is first, uh, it depends on the browser that you are using. 
So for the longest time, the, the common complaint of people with Firefox is that it eats not it's it, it eats a lot of your memory. So we, we somehow manage to get rid of that with Firefox Quantum. So Firefox Quantum has been around for almost a year. Okay, so that's the first thing. So if you make sure that you are using the latest version of Firefox. Second is that it still depends on the system that you are using. Of course, if you're using a Mac, it's a different story. If you're using Windows, it's pretty much a different story too. Uh, ma many people would tend to believe that having four gigs of RAM on a Windows machine is enough, but it's not. Okay, we know it's, it's not enough. So I often tell my students because when they buy new computers in the Philippines, the, the the store will normally tell them four gigs of RAM for a Windows 10 machine is enough, and I tell them no, don't believe that guy. Okay, four gigs of RAM is enough for you if you're just using Notepad. Okay. But if you will be using applications, especially for the media savvy applications, especially if you're using a web browser with say more than 20 tabs open, it's not enough. Okay, So it's a matter of one, having the right browser, two, it's your operating system and machine. Now if you're going to compare web VR to the native VR uh, uh, experience, we are trying to catch up. Okay, We're trying to catch up. One thing is that if you will be using the native VR experience, more often than not, it is closed. Okay. Now, what we're trying to do is, one, we try to give web developers an avenue to create VR experiences beyond what the normal web browser uh, websites are. Okay. Second, it's, it's cross-platform. Okay. Even if you're using this particular headset from a particular manufacturer, and everything on the web VR should work, even if you're just using your laptop or even your smartphone. Did I answer your question correctly? Yeah, open source rules. Yeah, thank you. So that's why we have this. I don't know, your Does anyone have any questions? Okay. I'm trying to be strict on time. That's why I time away, so. If there's no further questions, let's thank Bob. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.